Hello and welcome. Today we're in the tier 10 US heavy cruise at the Des Moines. Happy 4th of July everyone. Later today I plan on streaming for a couple of hours. We're playing a match on the map The Atlantic. And I spawned more towards the northeastern side. And that's where I decide to go with my ship. There's only one destroyer on each team. We have a Z-23. Sadly, there are CVs in this match, but they're tier 8, so it's not quite as bad. The enemy has an Implacable, and we have a Shokoku. So, as a Des Moines, your range is limited. 15.8 kilometers, you can get the range upgrade to extend it further. But I really like using the legendary upgrade on the Des Moines, which allows you to go accelerate incredibly quickly, especially when you combine it with the acceleration upgrade itself as well you just go from zero to decent speed really fast the downside of this kind of a build though is that the early part of the match tends to be you kind of have to just sit back and wait because the ship is 27 millimeters all over which means that almost all the battleships you meet are gonna simply overmatch lots and lots and lots of your armor. And this is exactly why I'm trying to shoot over this island and hit that Cleveland that's hiding behind that island. That Cleveland is basically in the same position I am. Although her damage output isn't quite as good as mine, she basically has to play the same way. She's squishy in a similar way, and thus she has to hide behind islands. So if I can do some damage to her, it'll be good for my team. I mean, I don't have to do this, obviously, anymore, because there's an Izumo that has pushed, uh, you can see on the minimap. I could start shelling her, but right now, since we can easily get shots on the Cleveland, obviously, <laughs> she is the better choice. Also, check out these arcs on the guns. And this is at 15 kilometers. Imagine when you're firing at, I don't know, like 18 to 19 kilometers. It'll feel a bit like playing the Atlanta, huh? The ship, as in the Des Moines, has incredible DPM though, so this kind of stuff isn't that big of a deal. Also, she gets a 10 km radar that lasts for an eternity. Sadly, I am a bit unsatisfied in one aspect with the Des Moines, other than the range of course, and that's her uh, anti-air. Her anti-air feels lackluster. The Des Moines used to be the ship that uh, basically the gold standard for anti-air. It was the ship that every CV was afraid of because, well, the anti-air was crazy good against CV planes. Nowadays, though, it... I don't get it. It's pretty meh. I mean, an Henri, yeah, the French heavy cruiser, has better anti-air. Not by much, it's only slightly, slightly better, but it's still better. Now, I understand, on the Des Moines, you can take the defensive fire upgrade, but honestly, you shouldn't. Because Hydro is way better. It's way more necessary. You don't get CVs in every match, but you get destroyers in basically every match. Um, not to mention, even if you don't get destroyers, you'll get cruisers with torpedoes. Or battleships with torpedoes. So Hydro is way better in that sense. And even if you take defensive fire, it's not like it saves you from the CV, whereas, well, Hydro can literally save you from the... Uh, destroyers or torpedoes which is why you always big pick hydro basically but as a result you don't get your anti-air to be very good the flak doesn't deal much damage not to mention even if the flak dealt a lot of damage the Des Moines only gets five flak bubbles so four in a wall and one that just goes around randomly at least that's how I understand it and that's just not enough not to mention that this anti-air is 5.8 kilometers. Basically, why doesn't Des Moines have anti-air that's more similar to like a Petropavlovsk or a Stalingrad or a Moskva or an um, Alexander Nevsky or... I don't know. Pick a cruiser with good anti-air and why isn't Des Moines like that? Hell, even Worcester. See, the Worcester doesn't have actually much better anti-air in terms of damage than the Des Moines, but she has range on it. Which makes it a lot scarier for the CV, because she has to contend with, I think, one or two extra flak uh, wells as a result. 
Anyway, enough complaining about that. The Des Moines is still a pretty damn amazing surface fighting ship, though. It's just the entire, I feel, is a little lackluster. Also, I think the uh, boring parts are kind of get... They've kind of ended at this point, because the match has dragged apart. The ships don't sit together so closely anymore. And I probably won't get immediately blacked by a battleship if I get spotted, because there are other targets that enemies are already engaging with. Probably. Not to mention, there is actually no battleship over here to blap me. There is a Yamato there, yes, but there is an island in front of me. So I'm safe. And yes, that's exactly why I didn't fire before. I wanted to make sure the island would cover me. Hey, look at this. That's a tier 8 CV attacking an Ochako, which should have pretty good anti-air, and the Des Moines anti-air at the same time. And she just does the attack like it doesn't matter. Oh no, wait, wait, oh no, I'm being shot at from the B-cap. I kind of forgot that uh, my range is a bit limited and other cruisers aren't quite as limited in range. So well, usually when I glance at the minimap, I pay attention to where my range is and then make a decision or rough guesstimate on whether others can fire at me or not. Obviously in this case, they can, because they did. Hindenburg's gonna slide on the wall, so we're gonna predict based on that. Oh no, I guess we can't sit here. I wanted to sit here, but Yoshino being there, if she fires AP, it'll be scary for me. Hopefully the island will cover me. Yeah, I should be covered for any further shots that come in. Even that Yamato Salvo. Yep, Giant Rock OP. Giant Rock Armor sounds actually pretty damn useful. Okay, so the CV is gonna come spot us again, so we have to be careful. Let's make sure we're at least a little angled. Ah, I don't think we can fire here. We need to still go forward. Oh, by the way, one thing I'd like to mention. I often get... Uh, Somebody makes a comment here or there in videos where they say something like, well, if that had been me in this match, I would have just been shot out of the water immediately. But I think what often people don't realize is that these situations where you don't get blapped out of the water immediately, they usually happen because the enemies are busy with someone else. Like in this case, right? I can be fighting here with the enemy ships because the Siegfried is pushing on them, whereas I am kiting away. Which means that if the enemies focus on me for now, they'll eventually switch to the Siegfried because she'll be so much closer as a target than I will be. And therefore she'd be a much more attractive ship to shoot at. And because of that, you can do things like show a little broadside in ships like the Des Moines in front of a Yamato, for example. Right now I didn't want to fire, because I wanted to make sure that well, first of all, my guns are turning, so I could only use one turret. But secondly, uh, I'm, I want to get slightly further away from that Yamato, just so that she actually focuses more fire on the Siegfried. Because I can't keep running away in a straight line here, because I'm going to hit the map border. And now that our turrets are turned, let's start focusing on the Yamato with Ichi. The damage output on, of this ship is pretty good, though. Yeah, I, I am targeted once in a while by someone. I wonder who it is. It's, can't be the Yamato, right? Hmm. Here, uh, I usually have one of two choices to make. One, I stop firing and then turn, keep on the map border until I go unspotted and then turn away. Or second, just take the risk. In this case, I'm just going to take the risk because, again... The Siegfried is the primary target, especially because the Siegfried is low now. They want to make sure they actually finish off the ship instead of uh, switching their targets to me. But Siegfried is definitely going to go down here, though. There's just nothing we can do about it. I mean, <laughs> look, I could have stayed around with the Siegfried, right? But it would obviously have been a foolish decision. Look on the minimap, just count the ships. They have a Yamato, a Hindenburg, a Venezia. Uh, then a Yoshino and an Alaska and the Cleveland. We have me, the Amagi, and the uh, Siegfried. That's it. That's that's all we have. We can't probably even match up against the Yamato. Luckily, I am far away enough so that I can probably turn properly for Yamato shells. Now I'm gonna demonstrate 
how good the acceleration of the domain is. So I'm gonna stand here, broadside on to that Yamato. Well, not quite broadside on, but I'm gonna be angled. Not much though. And I'm gonna stand still. And if I see Yamato fire, I'm gonna accelerate from the standstill. Because her shell salvo will be exactly as though I were standing still. Yep, there is the shells. So I'm gonna accelerate. Okay, we still got hit, but I think it was only the... Uh, actually, I can't tell if it was the Yamato that hit me. Because I was being shot at by someone else too. Let's use Hydro, because Venezia does have torpedoes. And maybe we can pick off the Venezia as she goes around the rock over there. While the rock might block shots... Oh, never mind. The Montana did, that, did it for us. I think we can arc over this island with the shells. Especially since the Yamato goes on the map order, it means aiming is going to be super easy because all you have to do is move your mouse on the map order itself. But you obviously have to predict how quickly they go. Still, it I think aiming at ships on the map order tends to be easier than when they're not on the map order, at least when they're trying to do evasive maneuvers. But I can understand how it sometimes can be difficult to hit. But I think sustained fire tends to be easier. Yamato might be invisible, but we still know where she is. Okay, I got spotted, so I'm just gonna accelerate. Because I don't want to be shot in return, and the giant rock is in the way again. The implacable is striking me again. And uh, my amazing anti-air won't stop it, because... <clears throat> It's a Des Moines, and Des Moines isn't allowed to have great anti-air anymore, apparently. At least she won't get a second strike, but I don't know if that's because of me or if it's because we have an Amagi here. I use a radar just in case to find out where the, whether there are any, any enemies around. I figured I would actually spot the Cleveland, but I didn't. That's alright though, we're gonna take the cap. By the way, uh, we already entered the cab once, then we left. Now we're back again. And uh, hopefully we'll take it and keep it. It's kind of unbelievable. The enemy has had way more ships on this side than we do. Oh, our Amagi was taken out. That is unfortunate. Especially because it's by the Yamato too. I really thought we would have had her by now, but apparently not. I guess it makes sense. The only ship here now is me. Montana is on my side of the map, but that's putting it a bit generous, generously, right? Oh, wow, that blind cell actually hit me. Nice shot. But I am going to start kiting away because, again, it's just me and they have Hindenburg, Cleveland, Yoshino and Yamato. I'm just going to run and the CV keep comes to strike me as well. Hindenburg is showing a lot of sight. We should be able to get Citadel hits here. Implacable ran into a flak bubble or two. That'll probably deal quite a lot of damage. Come on. I need to do a bit of a sketchy turn. Oh! Oh! Vermont actually just deleted the Hindenburg. That's perfect. Now we'll just kite away again. Be safe. And... I guess then we'll turn around and go back again, right? Because uh, the game is kind of ending in four minutes. And all we have to do is... Actually, I guess we don't even have to defend this cap zone. I just kind of want to. I have been a real pain in the ass of the enemy team on this side, though. Because we have been outnumbered on this side basically the entire time. And yet control of the sea cap has mostly been in our hands. And even the CV keeps striking me. I mean, think about it. Des Moines' entire is not strong enough to make an implacable not want to strike it multiple times in a row. That's... I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. It's not that the Des Moines really is lacking in power somehow. Oh no, I actually messed up the dodge. I could have easily sailed between the two, but... I just messed it up. My radar is up in three seconds. I think I should use it. Because something's gonna be close, right? Oh yeah, there's the Yoshino. Okay, the Yoshino knows where I was because of the CV. 
And I wonder what she's gonna do, because I actually do want to do a close-range fight with the Yoshino. I mean, the game ends at like 50 points, so... This is gonna be the last thing we're gonna do in this match. Oh, Yoshino is gonna show me side. That's a bad idea by the Yoshino, but I suppose she might not know exactly where I am. I use a heal prematurely and uh, my Hydro too. Two Citadels! Four more Citadels! And I think that's it. Goodbye. Yep. Enemy cruiser sunk. That's just how quickly you can fall to a Des Moines when she can Citadel your broadside. I mean, Yoshino's torpedoes made like one kilometer out of the ship and she was already gone by that time. 169k damage, a Dreadnought, 2364 base XP, pretty good game I suppose. A little compliment to the Siegfried for the tanking. And here's the damage, 67k to the Yamato, 48k to the uh, Yoshino, but 1.9 million potential damage. That's basically battleship levels. These are the captain skills that I used. I don't know if they're the best ones. This is just kind of what I had. So, grease the gears, priority target, a superintendent, concealment expert, adrenaline rush. Then, I had. That's kind of what you should have. Then, consumables enhancement. And then I have top grade gunner. I'd really like heavy AP shells, to be honest. But I don't know what's actually best here. I really don't know. This is just kind of what I had after the reset and I had never changed. Gun feeder would also be a nice thing to have. And even perhaps expert AA marksman because, well, I'd really like some more AA. Anyway, upgrades. I use the legendary. If I didn't have it, I'd use either range or reload. Depends on how I feel about it at the time. Then concealment, propulsion again, because propulsion and legendary together are amazing. Then aiming systems, obviously... Uh, Maybe I should use actually turret reverse, because I do feel it's a little lackluster at times. Then radar, otherwise damage control if I didn't have that, and main arts modification one for the end. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support, and happy 4th of July.